Welcome to the fifth video in our ORB onboarding video series. In this video, we're going to spend some time configuring your charts, workspace, and setting up the indicators that work well with the ORB platform. By this point, you should have a good understanding of the basics and how to use much of the bells and whistles inside of the platform. Now we're going to move a little bit away from the platform. I'll spend more time inside of Thinkorswim in this video showing you how I like to set up my charts. Now first thing before we get into the Thinkorswim platform is bringing everything so far that we've discussed. You should have gathered by this point there's lots of different filter settings that you can pick and choose from and it's up to you to pick the one that works for your trading style. So I'm going to give you what I think are the three major trading styles and these are starting points that you can use to configure the settings. If you're a scalper or you like to get in and out fairly quickly, or another way to also describe this in terms of personality, maybe you're a little bit more impatient in that you like to get out of your trades quickly. You like to be in and out quicker. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just your personality and it's important to recognize that. If that is the case, then I think you would find the five and the 15 minute ORB ranges quite useful and focus on spending that morning really trading. You should be done with most of your trades by 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and that's for any of the 30-minute breakouts. Now, in terms of the technical filters, I would be focusing on using the two momentum cross filters. This is the 3.8 cross, both up and down, and focus primarily on the breakout setup, mostly because you're looking to ride that momentum. I personally like trades in which I'm risking at least a one to make one, if not a two to make two or a one to make two. These are the three combinations I like. If you have a little bit higher risk tolerance, then you will also have the two ones available, which means more opportunities and you just need to be careful about your stops, exits. Now the next trading style is that of an active day trader. This is where you're balancing both the frequency with the quality of the signals. All three opening ranges are open. This is what bracket I would consider myself in. I look at both strategies, but my primary technical filters are around trend and then layering on momentum on top of that. Most of the trades that I have are more than 30 minute holds, and I like to focus more so on these two ranges, the 15 minute and the 30 minute. I just use the all setting to not exclude the five minute purposefully. And finally, we have the type of trading style where if you have a full-time job and you're really more of a part-time day trader, maybe logging in at different points throughout the day, then I think this is the trading style that you would fit to in which you're focusing on the two larger ranges, the 15 and the 30 minute, and I would focus more on the pullback setup alongside breakouts in which that P&L number is negative. Those are the two places that I would be spending more time to pick and choose and start with a smaller watch list really for both of these. I think in both cases, you'll have so many different criteria that focusing on the smaller list of stocks, maybe ones you're comfortable with or the S&P 100, is a great way to narrow down the filters. Finally, the technical filters here are the trend filters. I really like to use the stacked EMAs. I think that's a very quick way to get some trend strength, and you can layer on some other price filters as well to add more strength here, especially given that you need to be selective and you need some of those set it and forget it setups. So you can layer on and stack multiple of these technical analysis signals. Now remember, with all of these, you can also add in indicators for Confluence setups. I'll show you where you can download the entire workspace that I like to use in just a second. Now before we jump to Thinkorswim charts, let me show you what my chart setup looks like real quick, and then we'll go through each indicator in more detail. So I have, for the ORB setup, three indicators loaded on. The first is the ORB indicator, and that's what's plotting these clouds along with the actual breakout levels. The second is the momentum cross, and that's this pink and uh, blue dot that you see plotting. There's the blue dot, and there's the pink dot. This is the three EMA crossing above the eight. That's the blue dot. The pink dot is the three EMA crossing below the eight EMA. So that's my simple momentum filter. Finally, we have the edge signals indicator. This is an indicator that we've built typically reserved for our volatility box members. And I've added a shared link to this in the workspace as well. So you have it. I think this is a very useful indicator with the ORB setup. Think of it as the RSI on steroids. It's a custom overbought oversold indicator that we've built and it plots these red and green arrows on your chart. 
It's quite useful. I like to use these indicators on the one minute time frame for the key index markets. That's mostly because these move fairly quickly and the one minute is what I like to use to get a better entry price. And for most every other symbol, I like to switch between the two minute and the five minute time frame charts. Now let's jump into Thinkorswim so I can show you each of these in a little bit more detail. Now inside of the S&P, here's what we have. I have the ORB setups indicator loaded on, the edge signals indicator loaded on, and the momentum cross indicator loaded on. Let's start with the ORB setups indicator. If you double click this, you'll have the option to change the breakout type. I have the 5, the 15, and the 30 minute breakout type available. So say you were trading the 30 minute opening range breakout, you load in the 30 minute breakout, and we can now see the 30 minute opening range. This is the range high, this is the range low, and we can see exactly where that breakout takes place. So this indicator is a very easy visual way to see the actual breakout levels inside of your thinkorswim charts. It'll also plot the pullback level very easily for you to see. The second indicator is the momentum cross. This is what plots the blue and pink dots that you see. And the way to use these indicators is to confirm momentum moves. So say in this case you're trading the bearish breakout, you're using the momentum clues as signs for where this momentum is reversing and where you're looking for the momentum to push and make a move down lower. Here, I like to also layer in the one-two punch setup. I'll leave a link to a video which breaks that down in more detail. In essence, what you're looking for is this back and sort price action where you see that one direction is winning over the other in a push-pull price action. Now the last indicator here that we see is the edge signals, and the edge signals is what plots these red and green arrows that you see. For our bearish setup, it's the red arrows that I'm paying attention to, looking for price to confirm these moves. The one minute typically will have a little bit more noise than the two minute, which I found is a really nice proxy. Another opportunity is the five minute in which you'll oftentimes miss trades, but when you do see the signals on a five minute and you get an opportunity to enter inside of our zones, those are some of the safest, most conservative signals. So coming inside of the S&P today, back to that one minute time frame chart, if we take a look at the breakout in a little bit more detail with our indicators, the 30 minute, we had the momentum breakout, we saw price dip below, come back, the first momentum clue on the one minute time frame chart, the second bearish momentum clue on the one minute time frame chart, and you can see those were both better entry prices than the actual breakout. This is where the live scanner would show the PL as being negative, and we're using the momentum clues as ways to play the reversal to the T1 and T2 levels. You can also use the edge signals arrow if you'd like to keep things a little bit simpler. Simply wait for price action to show you in this pullback that we're now officially in overbought territory and play the move after you see confirmation that now price is looking to reverse. So this was the setup inside of the S&P 500 today. If you contrast this with the other index markets, you'll be able to see how these indicators can give you an edge based off of whichever time frame, whichever range you're looking to trade. Now to download these indicators, you can come inside of your My Account section in the platform, and that will take you to this page. Inside of there, click Downloads, and once you click Downloads, you'll see the Thinkorswim Workspace download. Once you click this folder, inside of this folder, you'll find three indicator files. These are the edge signals, the momentum cross, and the ORB setups, the opening range breakout setups indicator files. And you'll also find a shared link to a workspace where if you want to just import that, Simply take the shared link that's inside of there, click Setup in the top right corner, click Open Shared Item, paste that link in here, and you'll have the same charts that you're seeing right here inside of my platform. So there you have it. Now you should have the charts and my own workspace set up inside of your Thinkorswim platform so you're ready to go from the live scanner into your Thinkorswim platform and actually find where you're looking to take advantage of these trade levels. The last thing I'll talk about are these price levels. The price levels are just very obvious prices that you would want to pay attention to. So say for example, this price right here was maybe 81.10. And let's say this price right here was 81.65.
The natural price level to me is 81.50. That's in between here that I would want to pay attention to. The nice round number. I pay attention to the zeros to the 50s, and I also like to pay attention to the 20s and the 80s as minor price levels that I also just keep in the back of my mind. It's really these two that I like to layer on alongside our Fibonacci extensions and retracements tool. If you're unsure of how to use the Fibonacci tools, I'll also leave a link to a full free Fibonacci trading course, which shows you how to use these tools inside of Thinkorswim in much more detail. In our next and final video, I'll walk through the daily routine that you can follow every single day to find the very best opening range breakout setups. See you in the next video.